many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencast, please search for VAR15, that's VAR2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at the railing command in Revit. Here I am in a default architectural project, architecture tab of the ribbon, circulation panel, railing command. When I click sketch path, it goes into sketch mode, and it asks me to draw the magenta lines that represent the railing path. I can go ahead and use any of these tools that are available and draw my railing. Now, when you're in this mode for drawing railings, this sketch would not be considered appropriate because it thinks it's you're trying to create this. What you are allowed to do is have one continuous railing here. It doesn't actually have to have a closed loop like the rest of the sketch mode based objects that you work with in Revit. What type of railing are we working are we working with? We can pick any one of these that we choose that uh, are given to us as an option. When we're all said and done, we hit the green check mark and the railing is created. If we look at it in 3D, we can see what they look like. If we select the railing, we can always click edit path, get back into sketch mode and make adjustments for the shape or the size of our railing. Again, make sure you have one clean continuous loop um, and no gaps, no overlaps for typical sketch mode based objects. For railings, it does not have to have a closed loop. When you're finished again, hit the green check mark and it builds it for you. For railings, you can click the little arrowhead here to flip the orientation of which side the handrail is on. Okay. And you can obviously change from one design to another. And that's the railing command in Revit. Thank you for watching my uh, screencast. And please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.